going in. Got that with the super nips. Now, question here, do I cut the pink or the grey? You've got to ask yourself one question. Are you feeling lucky? Oh, I don't know, Gary, but this, uh, this, this could be the last, this could be our last Phillips project we ever do. This could be my last ballast disposal ever. Right, I'm gonna go for the pink. Good luck. It's really not that difficult. It felt like I jumped into a Bond film from 1980s. However, in a previous video, we looked at the Philips Corpro LED tubes from Signify, and we proved how, with minimal intervention, you could save tons of money. And we'll leave a link to that video in the eye above our heads. Yeah, now we, on that video, we got a three month payback just by simply changing an existing fluorescent tube for the LED tube. Now, that, that is an amazing saving, however, Got a few more tips today how you can save a bit more money in terms of buying the tube itself and improve the reliability of the installation so one of the options in there is to actually directly power the tube at the mains end cap and remove the control gear in the body of the fitting. Well, that's where it becomes a little bit complicated. That's where we started the scene, didn't we? Where we're inside of the fitting and we're wondering which of the conductors or wires we're gonna cut in order to make that connection. Yeah, now there's two reasons you might want to do that. The first one is, in our video, we used the universal LED tube, right. which works with uh, conventional gear and magnetic gear. Great, but actually, if you go for this version with a blue end cap that just works with magnetic gear or wide direct the end cap, you can save a bit of money. Okay, so there's a little bit of a saving now. Of course, when I was in that shop, I went for the universal one. I didn't want any risks and popped them in. They work straight away. We save the energy straight away. But if I was to go into, say, those electronic versions and take out the gear, which is even simpler than the process we're gonna see during this video, I can save a few pounds on the old tubes? Yeah, you certainly can. Okay. But obviously, you do need to take the electronic gear out of circuit to do that. Yes. And there is, yeah, normally on an electronic ballast, there's only four wires, two go to either end cap, just a case of identifying them and you're done. So let's have a look at how easy it is to convert the magnetic version to direct mains operation. Before we start the conversion, let's just have a look at the anatomy of a magnetic base fluorescent fitting. So we've got a power factor correction capacitor in there. We're gonna remove that because our neutral connection goes through it. Down here, we've got the magnetic ballast. We don't need that. And we don't need the starter. So let's just retrace our wiring. Uh, what we want to do is power up one end. So we've got this pink wire that goes to the end cap, direct from the, um, from the starter. So we're gonna use that wire. And we're gonna use the neutral wire that comes straight from the terminal block uh, that's here. But that's gonna to need to be joined, isn't it? So you're gonna pull it out of the capacitor and join them there? Yeah, so um, I mean, easy, because these are grab wire terminals. I'm just gonna snip, uh, snip. So there, okay, so they're out of the way. So we're gonna join those two together. Is that the way go two, two, one again? It is. So I'll just use our... And that's the inline version that we're gonna use here. Yep. So that'll bring the neutral from the connector block down to the end cap. And we're only powering one end of the fitting, aren't we? So the, the fitting is polarized, is it, the tube? Yeah, so it only has, uh, yeah, you only power up one end. Okay, so we're in with those. So that's the neutral brought from the connector that we're used to connecting our cables into all the way to the end cap. Yeah. And now you're gonna play around with the pink one, yes? Yeah. So those Wago 221s are great for that, by the way. So dead easy, I've chopped those wires off there. Um, so now I'm gonna take out the uh, existing line connection. Okay, yeah, so they're coming out. So Can't there. really move the connector because obviously it's connected to the body of the fitting for the protective conductor. So our CPC will connect and earth the exposed conductive part, which is the light fitting itself, the metal part of it. And you're rerouting this pink one yeah. as in, because it comes down to here and becomes our Effectively, our switching line conductor as well. Anything yeah. you can do with that pink one? You can leave it just in there pink. I'm sure well, we can. Pink, but... Yeah, but the challenge here, obviously, you're inside a fitting, so normally different regulations here. BSEN 60598, but people will say we've just had a wiring regulation update and functional earths are now known as are, are pink coloured. Okay, so this is pink, so we can just put, pop a bit of brown sleeving on there to sort of indicate that we're using it as a, yeah. a switching line conductor. So there it goes on, it's got a bit of brown sleeving at the termination point. Are you telling me that's going to be pretty much it? Yeah, I'm just going to, obviously this wiring's a little bit old, so it's a little tricky to strip, but... Yeah, so a simple that. process then, isn't it? So we go mains only. Yeah, I'm just... So doubling over as well. Double over, yeah, okay. that's a, so, now, yeah, so now this is our wiring conductor. Pop that into the there. Make our connections off. 
And is that it? Yeah, I'm just going to tidy up the wire and cut back the existing wiring. So again, I'll just remove that uh, pink one there. Okay, yeah, take a few bits out. Yeah, so now if we look at our terminal, so I've got our uh, line and neutral in. You can see that the uh, the pink that is now the, uh, the line conductor to the end cap and now our neutral there, we've taken it and joined it where our power factor correction capacitor was. And that's direct to the end cap as well now. Now the debate there with what we've just done, do you leave the magnetic ballast actually in the body of the fitting? Mm, okay. there's, there's obviously no risk from doing that. It's not going to do anything, but heavy that Gary, isn't it? Oh, imagine if I was taking out quite a lot of these. Uh, obviously, it's a bit of iron in there, we know that. It's a a little bit of copper as well. I'd be yeah. really interested in your feedback in the comments below if uh, maybe it's worth keeping these, taking them down to our local recycling center and having a transfer to the bank account. Yeah, it could be. And there's also a small amount of copper cable in there as well. And we know the price of copper is in there. That could uh, yeah, make a little bit of a difference uh, to the bank balance on a big uh, retrofit yeah. project. But the other thing we thought we'd have a look at actually does taking that out of circuit save any energy on the project. So we just had a little look at that. So let's just have a quick look at how leaving the magnetic ballast in series with the lamp as you'd find it in the fitting before you've altered it makes the power consumption. So just close our quick test there and we'll see we're getting about 20 watts. So let's now just disconnect the lamp and remove the ballast from the circuit. So that's why I like these, uh, these little uh, Wago connectors because you can do this pretty quickly in our setup here. So just taking the uh, that's the ballast gone. So you're expecting this uh, wattage to drop and therefore save a little bit more energy? Drop a little bit, but remember a, a ballast is just a lump of iron with some copper wound around it. So it's purely uh, resistive uh, losses in there uh, that we're looking for. So now we've taken the ballast out oh. and repower. So we can see there, taking the magnetic ballast out, we've lost about half a watt. Oh, I don't know, is that, is that reassuring? There didn't seem a lot of energy difference between the two, but you've got your old uh, Casio iPhone out there. It, it's half a watt, so if you think across the 30,000 uh, hour life of this tube, you know, that at our 25 pence a kilowatt, that's about £3.75. Okay. So, yeah, okay, it's not gonna be... Uh, Every little helps, doesn't it, with your money saving, Martin? Yes, yeah. okay, we've got this, we could perhaps do something with it, and there's another three pounds, say, over the life of the fitting. Yeah, but it's more likely you're gonna do that with electronic ballasts, because they are more likely to fail. Lots of components in there, they may have already had a hard life yeah. during the installation, and be at that end of that life, so taking the electronic ballast out, A, you'd have to do it to use uh, this uh, EM version yeah. of the tube and the, the, the direct domains version, um, but you could also improve the reliability of the uh, obviously the installation post retrofit and, and so that's probably a great option to look at. You could also do that with the universal option as well and they do have slightly higher light outputs as well. So again I'll put a link in the description for all of the versions and some link to some prices where you can have a look at to obviously do your own uh, paybacks yeah. but it's uh, certainly not a difficult process. And there is one other thing to consider, obviously with the tube that you put it in the mains end, it's identified on the end of the tube and that's the end of the fluorescent light fin that you've energized with this conversion process. We also alluded in our other video, uh, whether we can or can't use a pack maybe that's been changed to an emergency fit in one of these fluorescent light fins, and then we want to do a retrofit. You've got some updates for us, haven't you? Yeah, so speaking to Signify on the data sheet and on the product it says not for use with emergency conversions, however, we have found out if you actually speak to Signify, if you've got a big project where you do need to convert emergency existing fluorescent fittings to LED tubes, they do have some solutions, but you just have to talk about them. And I'll, again, I'll put a link below where you can get in touch with Signify. That's good to know. And across the two videos we've produced, looking at the Philips Core Pro LED tube from Signify, I think we've demonstrated in no time whatsoever with little intervention that you can save a lot of money. But can we save any extra money? It's all down to your feedback and how much these are worth. We're always interested in your comments and leave them below and we'll try and get back to as many as we can. Any old iron.